very public area, which is also, of course, the idea. And it's very ephemeral and temporary. And anything could happen. And that's also one just needs to surrender, or of course, uh, it will be dissolved. But it seems there are many morning joggers here, and sometimes I tend to see that they follow the lines of the pattern. I think it's incredible that there's stars on the beach and it becomes a part of everyone's daily lives and they live and interact with work. Every morning there's a rake that scrapes up the sand, so why not put a pattern in it? Being part of the Nova sector at Art Basel is a really great opportunity for us as a gallery that's now been established for a little over 10 years, um, mostly because we show artists who are either emerging or mid-career, and Nova provides a really great context for our artists. Uh, we chose to come to our Brazil Miami this year, uh, Sara Crowner and Milena Muskis. Uh, they are American and Mexican artists and we like the idea of the dialogue between them and how they both work with ceramics. And basically they, they are very interested, both of them, in this kind of traditional uh, handcrafts and, uh, and in the idea of a very sophisticated idea of color. Art Basel Miami for us is a very important bridge between Europe, United States and Latin America. It's like the spot where all these worlds come together, no? Once a year. What we try and do is have, after the fair closes, there's this place that people from the fair can go to, uh, but also where um, you know, the general public can come to. It's free to all, and that's amazing about it. It's one of those projects during an art fair that everyone's welcome to be at. Most galleries have artists that make some kind of digital media. Most artists engage with digital mediums, uh, but some of it just doesn't sell or hasn't got a commercial attribute. So it's trying to get them to think about things that might encourage that. And this is what I do really. I try and work very hard to make them think about the things that they wouldn't normally bring. So the work came out of a pretty subtle anxiety I had um, that I was feeling every day about the weather conditions of our time. And so I knew I wanted to look at natural catastrophe, but I wanted to approach it from a structural perspective rather than a political or moral one as, as it's often um, approached. And so I started thinking about the relationship between collage and natural catastrophe. One minute there's nothing in the sky and it's sunny and it's fine and then the next all of a sudden there's a rainstorm or a hailstorm and that can feel the way that collage feels as though it's cut and pasted into our reality. Um, so I started thinking about that more and more and that led me to a kind of history of collage in architecture, which is like our, you know, our method of protection. And this led me to shoot it at the glass house in Connecticut.